Hey guys, and welcome for the final video of our whole class series. This has been a blast. We're about to go over marketing systems. So we already touched base on some systems, but now we're gonna incorporate systems in and see exactly how they can work in and for your business. What we're gonna cover in this video is how to batch your marketing. First of all, batching your social media marketing, making it work for you. Two, how to bring on ambassadors into your business and basically make them a walking, talking, breathing sales machine for you, just simply by talking about something they love, your experience. And three, ads. Whether they be Facebook marketing ads, Google AdWords, or the old-fashioned magazine and newspaper style ads. Before we get going too far, I wanna say one thing, and that's consistency. Now, I know that you're busy, and to add one more thing like consistent blogging or consistent social media is going to be tough. That's why I'm going to teach you how to batch your marketing. Previously, we talked about how to batch your email so that you're only answering email once, maybe twice a day, and eventually getting down to one time per week. So we're going to do that similar concept, but transfer it to marketing. So you're gonna be doing marketing tasks one time a week. So first of all, we're gonna start with social media and batching your marketing on social media, giving you more time to do all the extra stuff in your business or in your life that you love, and less time working and worrying about the marketing efforts in your business. The first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is a system called Hootsuite. At the time of this recording, Hootsuite is completely free. And what it does is it's gonna to post to a lot of your social media platforms automatically. You're gonna schedule posts to go off and Hootsuite is going to send them off to be published at the times that you've asked them. So that you can schedule one time to put all of your scheduled posts and let Hootsuite do all the work for you. We're gonna start off by picking two hours out of your week to work on your marketing. Your first hour is going to be what allows you to schedule and post and batch all your social media. The second hour is gonna be on blogging. So your first hour, you're gonna start off by doing some pins onto Pinterest. Pinning to your Pinterest business board is going to be as simple as setting aside 10 minutes a week. So what you're gonna do is get on your website and just start pinning onto your business board. Make sure that you are adding into the descriptive title below some keywords and focus items that people are gonna search for on Pinterest. So once you've done that, you've pinned 10, 15, 20 images, however much you wanna do, added some captions in the bottom, you're done with Pinterest for the week. There's no real reason to get on Pinterest and spend time on there or to be pinning things during the week as you go. You're going to be building your Pinterest business board one time a week. After you've spent 10 to 15 minutes pinning on your Pinterest business board, you're gonna switch over to Instagram. Now at this point, I would hope that you have your Dropbox connected to your phone. If you don't, go ahead and take a minute to sync it right now. It's really simple and involves maybe a simple app. So once you have Dropbox on your phone, you're going to pick 10 to 15 photos, five, six, however many you want to be posting during the week. You're going to add those into your Dropbox folder, into a folder titled Ready to Post. So once you put those in there, a good tip you could do is either one of two things. So you could either title that image the caption that you want it to be in Instagram, or you could write in your notes section on your phone the captions that are gonna go with each Instagram post. So for example, you have five posts in your Dropbox that you'll be posting to Instagram throughout the week. So that you're not having to come up with those captions on the fly and spend time putting these posts together, you're going to write five of your captions that go with those images and put them in your notes section of your phone. Or you can take them and retitle the name of the picture, the caption you want to put. Notes is a little bit easier because you can add emoji cons, you could hit return, you could add the hashtags, all those kind of things if you do it in notes. So then during the week as you're posting onto Instagram, all you have to do is you have to go copy the section from your notes and add that onto the picture for Instagram. So even though you're batching at the beginning of the week, Instagram is a little bit different because you're gonna have to be posting those throughout the week as you go. But you already have the pictures picked and you already have the captions written. 
So for batch marketing, you've already pinned 15 to 20 pins. You've prepared five to 10 Instagram posts and Hootsuite is automatically posting to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you want it to be posting. So far, all of your social media marketing is being taken care of. And by the way, in case you're wondering what Hootsuite is going to be posting, let me tell you an example. So an example for what Hootsuite could be posting, the scheduled post that you've come up with, is something like this. So you're gonna schedule every morning a post to go off in Hootsuite that emphasizes something from your blog. So either repost the link from past work, present work, or something maybe you're looking forward to, but it's coming straight from your blog. So it's driving traffic from Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter to your blog. That's gonna be happening every day, okay? Now remember, you're posting and doing this one time on Hootsuite, but it's gonna be going on throughout the week. So your blog post could be going off every morning between 9 and 11 a.m., sometime in that time zone. Remember, this is just an example. You could do it in the afternoon, you could do it at lunch, or figure out when your audience is mostly online and schedule it for that time to go off. The bottom line is, seven times a week, you're posting something from your blog to drive traffic back there. The next posts you're going to schedule are three posts from someone else. That's right, someone else's content you're going to be posting onto your Facebook. So if you are a photographer and you know of another great photographer that posts wedding tips, you could be posting one or two of their tips every week. If you're a florist, you could be posting some tips from someone else. If you're a travel agent, you could be posting tips from American Airlines. You are posting someone else's content in order to give that to your audience because other people have great stuff too. You're gonna to be paying it forward to those other people and they might even notice when you're posting something on your Facebook from them. Great way to make new friends. The next thing you're gonna schedule is about three times a week is to just post something funny or entertaining. This could be personal about your life or this could just be something you saw that was hilarious on the web. There's this really funny video going around that actually one of my photographer friends shared with me of this crazy ridiculous photographer doing a dance all around his clients. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but if you haven't, go check it out on my Facebook, it's hilarious. The next posts you're gonna schedule are two posts that go out a week that are something, an idea, a tip, a trick, a news flash, or just a little bit of information. The next two posts you're going to schedule are going to be about inspiration. So these can be inspirational quotes or just something lovely, something beautiful. So now you're all already up to 17 posts a week and this took you probably a little bit less than an hour to do. So in an hour's time, you've pinned all of your pins to Pinterest, you've got ready all of your Instagram posts, and you've scheduled all of your posts to go off on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Don't forget that when you're posting on Hootsuite, to make sure to put a CTA, a call to action. So encourage your audience or the reader of that post to share it with someone else, or to say a comment of something that is their favorite or relevant thing to your post. Giving them a call to action reminds them to engage and do something with that post. So now let's talk about the second hour or what you're going to be posting on your blog. Okay, you're gonna be posting two to three blog posts a week. Calm down, these aren't novels, okay? All I'm asking is for a couple of paragraphs and I'm gonna tell you exactly what to write your blog post about, so get ready. These posts are just going to be a few short paragraphs. The first one's gonna be designed for your clients to get to know and love you. So this could be a personal post, a fun post, an exciting post, a news flash, a tip, something like that for them to get to know who you are. Maybe a picture of your favorite area in your house. So just something quick and easy, maybe something about how your day went. Okay. The second blog post of the week is going to be designed to show your future clients what it's like to work with you. Maybe an insider's view on what it's like to work with you or something that you just recently worked on or finished booking. The third blog post that you're going to post a week is something designed to casually brag about your business. So you might not see it right now, but you're pretty awesome. Okay, You are you have this allure about you when people from the inside or people from the outside are looking in rather if you're an artist a business person you have some sort of an allure so anytime you can provide them backstage access 
post a testimonial or something exciting about you in a way that doesn't sound like you're bragging, then you're giving them the feeling of getting to know you better, remembering and realizing that you're a person too. This is gonna make them slowly but surely fall in love with you and soon become one of your paying clients. Now, as your business grows, your posts will evolve also. These three post ideas will soon start to change, but are a great way to start off. Now on WordPress, there should be a way that you can schedule these posts to go off automatically. So once you've written them all in one day, I'm thinking 10 or 15 minutes per post. Once you get going, it's gonna be fast. When you're setting your business up to run on autopilot and be self-sustaining, I would recommend setting up at least one ad to run a week, maybe two times a month. Whatever your budget allows, you'll need to keep tabs on how the ad is doing. Failing to check in with your ad is throwing money away. Once you can see where, who, and when your ads are making progress, then you can start running similar ads and start hyper-focusing your efforts on those specific well-performing ads. So how do you run these type of ads? This is a whole workshop in itself, so I'm gonna break it down to you in a nutshell. Google AdWords, the ultimate guide to Google AdWords, how to access 1 billion people in 10 minutes is a great book to start flipping through. Now that title is a mouthful and it's kind of exciting because you really can do so much with Google AdWords. But the first thing you have to do is set up a Google AdWords account. It's pretty easy. Google, Google AdWords, and it'll walk you through exactly what you need to be doing to set up your account. Once you've set up your account, there's ways that you can go through and just start up by setting up little tiny campaigns to be running over six weeks, three weeks, two weeks, and set your budget, $50, $100, and then keep track on it. Keep going back and checking your Google AdWords and seeing if it's working. Change the AdWords around a little bit so that you can change who's focusing and who is Googling for certain words in your community. The other book that I would recommend when it comes to Google AdWords is actually the four hour work week again. The four hour work week has a small section that talks about how Google AdWords can play a part into your marketing strategies as a business. Okay, Facebook marketing ads. On Facebook, there's a little tab for your business page that says insights. This is gonna be where you can first start off by doing some ads. You don't need to go into the other builders for Facebook right now because we want to start off very simple and keep it clean. Now, if you don't have a Facebook business page, the correct time to get a Facebook business page was yesterday. If you're thinking about opening a small business, just grab that Facebook page now. You could work on setting it up slowly. Odds are not many people are going to be looking for your Facebook page unless they know it exists. Maybe family members, a few friends might see that you've opened a new page and like it. But other than that, you don't need to worry about getting a ton of traffic to your page until you start running Facebook-like ads. At that point, you're gonna be targeting specific audience to go like your page so that as they are seeing posts that you've scheduled in Hootsuite come up, they're relevant to their stage, age, gender, location. Once you've done that, then you're gonna start seeing more interaction. Your call to actions are going to have your clients or future clients posting and commenting on the ads that they see coming up in their newsfeed, which is going to automatically push your post to go out to more people. So you start off with some small Facebook like ads, and then that can propel you into bigger things. Now remember, I said consistency in the beginning of this, and I really, really mean it. If you run ads for people to come like your Facebook page, but you aren't consistent with content and updating, then those ads to like your page are going to be worthless. Unless you have content coming out consistently, they're not gonna see your content in their newsfeed. Now we've talked about setting up a system to put your social media marketing on auto, as well as ambassadors and what they can do for your business. We've also talked a little bit about magazine, Google and Facebook ads and to decide if they're useful, going to be useful in your business. This is the last video in this class and I have thoroughly enjoyed being a part of your life. I've loved the challenge of making these videos for you and answering your questions. I've been crazy excited when I get your feedback. So the next couple of surveys you're going to get are so important. 
They're important, yes, to give me feedback, but mainly for you to see what you need to do in your business. The more feedback you give me, the more I'll be able to help you. The more I'll be able to post more videos for you. So I can't say this enough, but thank you so, so much for all of your feedback. Your survey responses have been crazy. I think I've sent like, I don't know, 27 surveys during this course, and there's a couple more to come. The next one is feedback on this video right now. Then there's feedback on the overall course. And the last one is a survey to tell me a little bit about you. I know this might be one you wanna skip, but please, from the bottom of my heart, don't do it. If there's one survey you do in this whole entire course, please do the one that you tell me about your story. You are so special, and the fact that you have an entrepreneurial mindset makes you even more unique. I can't tell you how much it means to me to find someone that I'm connecting with, someone that has a million ideas in their brain going off all at once, and to be able to connect with them and to be able to help them. So please tell me about your story. Tell me where you are in your business and what you think you wanna know next. Tell me what got you started and where you see yourself in a few years. Now we've talked about so much. We've talked about smart goals, we've talked about systems. I've given you a million book recommendations. But the last survey that I need you to do for me is the one that is telling me about what you thought about this whole course. So this is a pilot program. This is the first one of what I hope to be a program that's going to help lots and lots of other entrepreneurs just like you. So in order for me to make it the very best for all of them, I really need your help on this. This is a selfish request, completely 100% selfish. I need you to do this for me. The thing you're gonna get out of it is just my joy. I'll be so happy for you to do this last survey for me. It's basically gonna ask you a lot of questions about what you thought about this course, what you would do differently, how you could see it helping or not helping. It's gonna provide me with a lot of information that will hopefully help my business help others. So first of all, thank you for being here with me for four whole weeks. Thank you for going along with me during my struggles of Facebook Live. And thank you so much for sticking around and doing these last three surveys just for me. You really mean so much to me. And don't worry, I'm still gonna be emailing you a couple times. So I hope you had a great time and don't forget, tell me what you thought in the next survey.